Today I'm going to be sharing some of my best luxury purchases of 2022, as well as some of my worst ones. That way you don't waste your hard earned money like I did. All of the purchases I'll be mentioning today will be listed in the description bar and I'll provide links where I can. I like to get my bad news delivered first, so let's start with my worst purchases. The first one could possibly be my absolute worst luxury purchase of my life, and it is these Hermes Chain Dancre, I definitely butchered the pronunciation on that, earrings. This was my last luxury purchase of 2022, so the buyer's remorse was almost instantaneous. Backstory is I'd been eyeing this piece since like 2021, but there were just other Hermes pieces that I wanted more and were just higher priority to me. Some of those I will share later, but after getting those pieces, I went to the boutique and I finally tried on these earrings. And even though there were some red flags like right from the get go, um, I let the aesthetics and also like my idea of these earrings cloud my judgment. I was told by my essay that the posts on these earrings are a little bit thicker than the average ones. So people have actually complained about difficulty like getting them on or even just like straight up irritation. And I have sensitive ears. So even though they were very uncomfortable when I tried them on, I kind of just like ignored the signs and purchased them anyways. And like, not only are they incredibly uncomfortable to wear, they're super difficult to get on as well. The earring backs are like this bizarre contraption that you have to like squeeze and hold in order to like unlock them so that you can put them onto the earring posts. And then the moment you like let go, it actually like locks them in place. Apparently that's like some sort of safety measure so that the backs don't fall off and your earring falls out of your ear. But in all my life, I've like never had an earring fall out of my ear and they are all very like normal earrings. So I'm not super convinced this is very necessary. And if anything, it just like adds to the annoyance of these earrings. That isn't even the worst part. The worst part is that after wearing them for a few days, I took them off and my ears were legitimately like bleeding and they were bleeding for quite some time. So I was a little concerned. Needless to say, I have not worn these earrings since then and I am strongly considering selling them. Part of me wants to give them another try because they are like really cute, but Part of me is also very concerned about getting an ear infection and then I can't wear any earrings. So only time will tell like what I end up doing. I might give it one more shot, but it was just such a terrible experience that I think I should just cut my losses and, and sell them. The next worst luxury purchase I made last year were these Saint Laurent New Wave sunglasses. I've been looking for a pair of cat eye sunglasses since they were very trendy at the time and I thought that that like frame shape would be a nice alternative to have to my like oversized rounded square gentle monster sunglasses that I always wear. So I found these on sale at Farfetch and I had seen Alyssa Lenore um, wearing a similar pair on Instagram and so I decided to just like pull the trigger even though I wasn't sure if these were like the exact same pair that she got or not um, but yeah I was just like kind of excited to find cat eye sunglasses. When I got them I wasn't like in love with them from the get-go there was just something about the way they looked on my face that I thought was a little odd to me but I kind of just ignored it and was like oh I'm probably just not used to seeing this sunglasses shape on my face and I'll just like come to love it. Months passed by and I hadn't reached for these sunglasses over my gentle monster ones like at all and so one day I finally was like I'm just gonna force myself to wear them out on a day where I'm shooting content for Instagram and it wasn't until I I posted that content that I realized why I just did not like these sunglasses. And it's because I literally look like the deal with it meme. So I'll definitely be selling these sunglasses because I just like cannot take myself seriously when I wear them. Um, but I do plan on still adding a pair of cat eye sunglasses to my collection. Um, I'll just probably go for like a more oversized one because I think the reason why this just reminds me of the deal with it meme is because they're so narrow. Moving on to the good stuff, my best purchases of 2022. Starting off with Hermes again, my first best purchase of 2022 is the Gamma Belt. 
In general, I love Hermes belts because their leather straps are dual sided and then you can also purchase additional leather straps in other colors, excluding the Kelly belt. So I had purchased the H buckle back in 2021, but over time I came to feel like that buckle was just a little too overwhelming for me. It just became too much of a focal point for every outfit that I wore it with and so I just found it to be very distracting. And that is what led me to purchasing this belt buckle because this one is significantly smaller than the H buckle and I also like the fact that it is just more discreet. It's not like an in-your-face H for Hermes. The current leather strap is black and gold, but I do plan on purchasing another leather strap that has like a cream color included in it. I'm thinking cray right now, but we'll see what options I have when I go to the boutique next time. As for my H buckle, I plan on giving it a second life and buying a leather strap that fits Brad instead, so that way he can wear it now for like special occasions such as weddings and parties or whatnot. Sticking with Hermes, my next best purchase is the Calvi wallet. I used to use my Louis Vuitton Zippy coin purse in Damia Azur for like the longest time, but I wanted a smaller wallet because my handbags have been getting smaller and the Louis Vuitton was just taking up way too much space in my handbags. After I bought the Calvi wallet for my mom in gold for her birthday, um, I saw how much smaller it was than the Zippy wallet and that it was just a kind of the perfect size and I decided to buy myself one. It's not nearly as functional as Zippy since it's basically two open slots versus having multiple slots for your cards, multiple sections, and then also a zipper to keep coins in. But I don't really carry much of my wallet these days anyways since I mostly use my Apple wallet on my phone. Moving off from Hermes, my next best purchase is something I'm wearing right now and it is my Cartier Love Bracelet. I bought this in January as a like belated Christmas present to myself and I've been loving it ever since. No pun intended. Yes, it is stupid expensive for what it is and you're basically paying for the brand recognition, but if you think about it from a cost per wear basis, it's really not that bad considering I haven't taken it off since the day I bought it and there are very few instances in the future where I could imagine taking it off. I've definitely told Brad that I'm likely going to die wearing this bracelet and I think he thinks I'm joking, but I'm really not. And so what I love most about this bracelet is the fact that it works with both casual outfits and special occasion outfits, so somehow it looks just as good with a jeans and a t-shirt as it does with a cocktail dress. I'm also wearing another best purchase of 2022 and that is this Totem Cable Knit sweater. Once again, referencing Alyssa Lenore because I originally saw her wearing it on her Instagram and I became like instantly obsessed with it. I'd been looking for an oversized cable knit sweater for a while at that point and all the ones that I had tried were either too long, too narrow, or too chunky of a knit. And so when I saw her wearing this one, I thought this literally checks off just all the boxes that I am looking for. It's perfectly oversized and it isn't itchy, which says a lot because I have very sensitive skin. But what I love the most is that it is the perfect length. Most of the time when I buy oversized pieces, things are just way too long for me. And so it makes me look like a child because I'm only five foot four. The sweater is expensive, but once again, if you look at it from a cost per wear basis, this is definitely worth it. I actually have to force myself to reach for the other sweaters in my closet because this one is just so easy to style and I feel as if it elevates just every outfit that I, I wear it with. Next on my list is this Burberry trench coat. I actually purchased a Burberry trench coat in the Kensington style in the medium length a very long time ago, but I didn't wear it nearly as much as I thought I would. I got it in my exact size, so it left very little room for layering, and there was something about the shoulders that just restricted my movement, so it really wasn't a joy to wear. And last year is when I realized I wanted more of an oversized look to my trench coat went back and forth debating whether or not I should purchase another trench coat, especially another Burberry one because I just felt very guilty about not wearing my old one. But ultimately, I decided to sell my old one and purchase a new Burberry trench coat. At the boutique, I tried on the same Kensington style, but I did go up one to two sizes. 
However, the shoulders still felt very restricting to me. And so I asked the sales associate, like, is it just me or is it the trench coat? That's when the sales associate recommended I try on the Waterloo. And he pointed out that the shoulders, if you can see here, are cut differently on the Waterloo versus the Kensington. So the Waterloo comes at an angle, which allows for more freedom of movement in the shoulders versus the Kensington, which the seam is literally where your arm socket is and like where your arm meets your shoulder basically. I'm incredibly happy that I bought this trench coat and I've definitely gotten a lot more wear out of this new one versus my last one. It's my go-to outerwear piece during cooler temperatures and I wore it all throughout my trip to Ireland and so within one year I think I've worn this trench coat more than I ever did all the years that I owned my old one. This next piece is going to look very familiar to you if you watched my top five tips for purchasing a pre-owned designer handbag, and that is my medium Chanel Milk Tea Classic Flat. This was my first pre-owned purchase, and so it introduced me to the world of designer resale, which makes it just extra special to me. And since purchasing it, I've worn it many times and it has quickly become one of my favorite handbags in my collection. I find myself reaching for this bag quite often because it is a lighter color and it's actually the only light color handbag I have in my collection. My other handbags are a darker shade. I have a lot of Louis Vuitton monograms, so dark brown. I have a bunch of black bags and then I also have one in Bordeaux. I do plan on adding more light colored handbags to my collection, but for now this is the go-to bag when I'm wearing lighter colored outfits, which is more commonplace now that I've moved to Florida. I just love this milk tea shade and I think it looks absolutely stunning in the lambskin versus if it was a caviar. And I also haven't seen Chanel release a similar color to this recently, and so this color definitely adds to its vintage vibe. I did actually have my eye on a milk tea classic flap for a really long time, I wanna say years, but I never pulled the trigger because Chanel hadn't released a similar shade and so I had to purchase it from the resale market and I was quite nervous since I had never purchased a pre-owned bag before. If you want to purchase a pre-owned designer handbag, but like I was, you are nervous about doing so, I highly recommend watching this video next where I share my top five tips for purchasing a pre-owned designer handbag.